So we're going to have a look at a company now called Form Energy. And this is in the news because they've just received the latest tranche of uh, funding uh, to try and get their system up and running. Uh, they've just received, I think it's about $400 million, and it brings the total up to $1.2 billion. So they've got a shed load of money now, and this, they think, is the, is the future. And it's a technology called uh, iron um, oxygen. Iron is an I-R-O-N, not ion, I-O-N, uh, iron ferrous iron. Uh, and it's a really simple principle. I don't understand it, uh, but again, I'm not making it. Uh, they reckon if you let iron rust in the presence of oxygen, it produces energy somehow. And you can store that energy. And if you need the energy back out, all you do is you just reverse the process. Now, the technicalities, I don't want to go into. I'm not a chemist. I don't understand all the batteries, but it works and someone's decided to give them $1.2 billion uh, to take it further. They've actually got it working. It's a really good system. It works brilliantly. Uh, they just now need to see if they can scale it up. Is it going to end up in cars? No, never. Um, it's, it's a very different type of energy. It's a really slow burn energy, if you like. Uh, it's not a fast one like lithium ion batteries, uh, which will give up their energy instantly for acceleration. Uh, it is a longer term one, and that's absolutely ideal for grid storage uh, systems, uh, where um, if you have a massive, massive big uh, battery structure uh, with all this stuff in it, that's absolutely great. You can release bits of it from everywhere and you get all the energy that you need. It is the future for, uh, off, uh, for grid storage uh, and for off-grid systems as well, where you don't need instant power and need instant access to it. All you need is um, a slow trickle. So that's looking very promising. And this is what I said a long time ago about batteries. A lot of the batteries that we keep talking about, like solid state, like sodium ion batteries, like aluminium ion batteries, there's a whole pile of batteries being invented at the moment. Um, and fantastic research going into it. And it does mean that we are going to be seeing some of these in the future. The only question is, where are we going to see them? Because everybody always assumes that they're going to go into cars. And an awful lot of these technologies, they just are not suitable for cars. So they each have their own purpose. So you might find, for example, that a high performance car like a Ferrari or Lamborghini that might want one particular type of battery, let's say solid state. You might have another type of car, which is your bread and butter, your three and five door hatchback car, family car, where you're gonna need several billion of them. Uh, they need a little bit of power, not uh, Ferrari acceleration, uh, and they need a good storage mechanism. And so consequently, it's horses for courses. So there'll be an awful lot of different technologies coming out. The other thing that does change is the actual energy density. So in the early days, the NMCs, the nickel manganese cobalt came out and they were the high power batteries, uh, high storage, high energy density. They, they packed an awful lot of power in them. And that was the answer for the cars. And that's all everybody had for the first good number of years. Then along came LFP, which don't use manganese or cobalt. Uh, they are much better. They last longer. They are, um, they are much more tolerant of taking a full charge up to 100% down to zero. Uh, but they don't have as much power. And they were, quite, they were about 30, 40% less uh, than the NMC batteries. But over the time, uh, last few years, five years probably, but two years certainly, what's been happening is they've been getting the chemistry much better. And so these batteries now are all very, very much more powerful than they were uh, just five years ago. So the NMC batteries, they've gone up nearly 50% in power density. So they're much more powerful, giving you longer range. LFP have seen a massive increase and they now are approaching the NMC batteries, uh, but very much cheaper, about 20 or 30% cheaper. So there's an awful lot going on and everyone still goes on about solid state batteries. And these are about five times as powerful as the NMC. So they're really, really powerful. But you only need a couple of advances in either LFP or NMC, and you've got a battery as good as, or nearly as good as a solid state. Maybe not quite as, 
quick to charge, maybe not quite as energy dense, but certainly an awful lot cheaper than bringing in a whole new technology and starting again. So there's a lot happening out there and we don't know what it is, but these um, iron oxygen batteries are really starting to look good. And there's a lot of money going into them. So what we're going to find is an awful lot more technologies like this one, and we're going to end up with a mishmash of systems. And that's exactly what we've had for the last hundred years. We had coal-fired power stations, we had uh, hydroelectric, we had gravity-fed uh, reservoirs, um, we've had uh, coal, we've had gas, we've had solid, uh, solid fuel, we've now got biofuels. We always have a mishmash of technologies, and that's really to spread the load. If one load is good at, for example, low tide, uh, and tidal power isn't, they balance each other. So the tide will produce a lot of energy when the tide comes in, but at high tide, it's producing nothing. So you need something else and the two work together. And that's what we're gonna see with the grid. The grid is gonna change out of all recognition and it's just going to become a massive, massive hub of batteries, which will be the grid. And then everything will be feeding into the batteries uh, and we will end up with a situation where if the price of solar panels and wind turbines keeps falling, which it is at the moment, then we're going to be getting cheaper and cheaper. The one stumbling block to cheap energy in the UK is just that the price of gas and electricity are tied to each other. And that means that if we produce all of our electricity from, uh, from solar and wind turbines, and the price of oil goes up in Russia, our price of electricity goes up. How crazy is that? What is needed one day, I'm hoping Labour might do this with the, um, the, the consumer grid or whatever they call it. Um, I'm hoping they one day will just cut that tie and say, right, electricity stand on your own. And then we will get uh, a massive swing in prices, all lower than they are today. But when there's a massive energy, like a day like today, massive amount of sun, it's also quite windy. Uh, so when we get a day like today, there'll be huge amounts of energy being produced. And during the day, nobody's using it. We're all down the beach. Oh, sorry, you're not back there, are they? Um, anyway, uh, there'll be a massive energy. And that energy at the moment is, is being turned off because we have nowhere to put it. No one's using it and nowhere to put it. In the future, what we need to do is do massive battery storage so that we've always got somewhere to put it. And it just means that we will have so much energy. And if all the batteries are full and we're still producing too much, the way to get rid of it is really simple. Just offer it free. Uh, Octopus do this at the moment. You'll often get this, you know, for an hour, uh, lunchtime between 12.15 and uh, 1.15, uh, energy is free uh, or 5p, whatever the, the figure might be. If you've got so much energy, your batteries are full and there's so much electricity, just offer it for free to anyone who wants it. And a lot of factories will switch over to it. Give you an idea, Pilkingtons, glassmakers, uh, they, they were one of my customers a long time ago. Um, and they actually have uh, about four different ways of heating their furnace for melting the glass, melting the sand into glass. Uh, they have gas, they have oil, they have um, uh, there's something else, and they have electric. Um, and all they do, each day they decide, right, today this energy is cheaper, we're going to use this one today, tomorrow it might be different, might be the same. You can imagine someone like Pilkington or Steelworks, uh, Tata Steel's in the news recently in South Wales, um, they're making an electric furnace there. Imagine if there's so much electricity in the grid that, that you don't know what to do with it, and you just say to Tata, look, just turn all your, all your furnaces, kilns on, whatever, uh, and just use it all up because it's free. And then when it starts charging again, they'll start paying, but it'll be at a reduced rate. So there's big changes on the way. And all of this comes back to uh, this total global carbon emissions, that we have the ability to produce energy with zero pollution, with zero emissions, with zero carbon. And that could be tidal, it could be wave power, it could be hydroelectric, it could be down in Cornwall, they've got the, uh, the Hot Rocks project. Um, that it could be solar panels, it could be iron oxide, uh, oxygen batteries, it could be winter. There's a load of things it could be. Every one of those I've just mentioned produce no pollution, none at all, no carbon. 
Yes, they, make, they produce carbon when you're making them. Everything in this whole world does, but once you've made them, they're actually free to run for the rest of their natural life, apart from a little bit of maintenance, repair, and maybe a few replacement bits every now and again. Anyway, uh, that's my run for now. Uh, gonna head back to the studio and see what's happening there. But for now, thanks very much. I'm Dave, if you've enjoyed this, please click the like button. Uh, if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Uh, it really does make a big difference to us. Uh, YouTube measures us on the number of subscriptions, the number of likes, and the number of comments we're getting. So these all help the channel. We're still a young channel, we are growing uh, very nicely indeed. Thank you very much to everyone who's joined us. And also thanks very much for the members, Patreon members who support us in a different way. So thanks very much, I'm Dave.